welcome everyone to Color Commentary. We are your popper commentators, Michael Pedic and Adrian Guarzalez. How's it going, Adrian? Oh, you know, good. How are you, Mike? Pretty good. I uh, just got back from GP Hartford. Had some some good times. Check check my Twitter for you know details of the absurdity that occurred there. I got to meet a bunch of fans, which was really really cool. So anyone who you know is listening, who came over to me and said hi, it was really cool. I'm pretty sure I didn't get really awkward with anyone. So that's good a job, first. Good job. Um, but yeah, I, I had a great time. Uh, played some popper. Played a lot of EDH. Um, it was a good time, all in all. I, I had a blast. So uh, that was good. Uh, any any updates from your life, or do we want to hop into the upkeep? Well, no, yeah, I'm good. Let's hop into the upkeep. All right. Uh, first off, we are brought to you in part by Original Magic Art. They are a great store. They have all sorts of playmats, dice bags, art prints, and tokens with magic art and art from art history as well. All sorts of really cool stuff. If you want 5% off, you can use the affiliate code COMMENTARY, all caps spelled as it is in the name of this podcast, and you will get 5% off. We get a little bit of a kickback, so you're helping keep the lights on here and also getting a sweet discount on those really gorgeous tokens. So uh, if that seems like your cup of tea, I'd go check it out. What do you got for us, Adrian? Well, this show is brought in part by listeners like you. Uh, we do have a Patreon for just as little as a dollar an episode. You can hear the full show, including the pre and post shows, and you get access to our pretty sweet Patreon exclusive Discord channel. Check it out. Yeah, it's g- good times. All right. Um, so this week, Dominaria, full spoiler, I, I, actually I, yeah. came out last week on Thursday. The full spigoty spoilers, and I'm sure we'll be doing this a time honored alternating tradition. Oh, going over every single card. We certainly oh, are. For, first off, I do want to get like your base level impression of the set. Like, how have you reacted to the full spoiler as a whole? You know, I feel like every set that comes out, there are some cards that you and I like to pretend might make some kind of impact on, on the format. And there are a lot of cards to pretend here. Like, I, I guess I'm saying I'm, I like the set. I'm pretty impressed with its power level overall. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to talk about it. But yeah, it remains to be seen if any of these cards will actually see play. Yeah. And and just so that we uh, can get some stuff out of the way so that we don't have to brace broach these topics when we get to them. There are some returning mechanics. There's some new mechanics here. Um, Kicker is returning. Uh, Kicker is an, an additional cost that can be paid as you cast a spell. If you pay that cost the spell has been kicked and it has some additional effect um really really solid limited mechanic just really really enjoyable to play with um there's also a legendary matters sub theme and as well as a historic matters sub theme um and historic is for our format it's basically just artifacts Artifacts. yeah so without further ado let's get into this um Starting things off, we've got Adamant Will, which is one in white for an instant target creature. It's plus two, plus two, and in- gains indestructible until end of turn. Um, I don't mind this for heroic, actually. I-, I was just thinking that, and I was actually, funnily enough, just looking up the heroic list, and wow, I cannot find it. Maybe I'm blind. Like I, I, I so so this is competing Here for is. the same slot as stuff like God's Willing. And uh, does that deck? Yes. So, so here's here's what the deck here's what the deck is running. Um, in in terms of its like instance, uh, it's playing four of Defiant Strike. Target creature gets plus one plus zero oh, and draw you a card for one mana. Emerge Unscathed, which is an instant where they get pro color and it has rebound and then mutagenic growth. So I think what's really tying those together is that they all cost one. Yeah, this is a slightly more expensive one. It does work out to a giant growth on most of the creatures, and it does work as a pseudo counter spell on some removal which i do like um i don't know i don't think this is like a top tier inclusion but i could see this being maybe a one of or two of in the list just because it does represent more of an offensive pump and still has that uh that defensive edge to it any other thoughts on uh adamant will no let's move on all right what do we got next up next, we have Avon Century, a four mana, three, two with flying. Probably not going to do it. All right. How about, you, how about you give us another one? All right. Banalish Honor Guard, one and a white. Banalish Honor Guard gets plus one, plus zero oh for each legendary creature you control at a two, two. Again, 
probably not going to do it. We had just, uh, we have no need for a white grizzly bear. So, so just, just to be clear, there are a handful of like common legends over are, the years. Are there? Yeah. So, are there really? Yeah, there are actually. Um, so back in Masters, a couple of the old legends got downshifted to common. Um, that said, they are not exactly the sort of thing that you want to, uh, you know, be striving for because we've got such absolute bangers as Jedit Ojanen. He, it's four white, white, blue for a legendary creature cat warrior. I would like you to take a stab at the power and toughness. I don't know. One, two, two, one, one, five, five. Wow. It is a seven mana, two color, five, five with three colored pips in its mana cost. There's a bunch of these that were just bad. Most of them are big over cost of vanilla creatures. And we've also got Joven and Chandler. So... It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen. I don't think. No, but I, we would be remiss not to point it out. Um, next up, we've got Blessed Light, which is four and a white instant exile target creature or enchantment. This is um, this is a pricey, but permanent disenchant. I guess. I guess it's a creature or enchantment, so it does have the swords mode, and it does take care of enchantments. Is is there any deck that really wants this? No. That's fair. That's any any yeah, I, I just don't think exiling the creature is really that relevant. And yeah, it costs too much. I think Ray Revelation is much better for the enchantment removal. Yeah, I think I think this is a case of, you know, you're paying a lot more mana for the flexibility of the spell, and it's not really necessary because you're paying more mana than you're getting back in terms of that flexibility. What do we got next? Uh, up next we have Call the Cavalry. Three and a white. For create two, a sorcery, create two, two, two white knight creature tokens with vigilance. Look, Mike, if we can play Flurry of Horns as a win condition, we can play this as a win condition. So I actually had a discussion about this over the weekend. I'm kind of coming around on this card. I don't think it's the worst. Um, Obvious comparisons are Flurry of Horns, which is five mana, and it gives you two threes with haste. And also, I think it's worth noting the comparison to something like... Um, raise the alarm, which is a two mana thing that gives you a pair of two twos. They're like this is, and is a also an instant. Raid. Yes, it is also an instant. But this, like, this is a pretty decent rate for four power plus vigilance tacked on. Um, I don't know if there's a deck that wants this, but I don't know. Maybe there's a white tokens build that this fits in as a curve filler. I don't know. Food for thought. I don't hate it. Um, next up, we've got the smallest of trumpet blasts. We've got charge. It's a white mana for an instant creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, so this, I think the most obvious comparison to this would be Ramosian rally, which is the same effect, but you can tap a white creature instead of paying its mana cost. I I think... So Remotion Rally, you do have to leave the creature back, leave a creature back. But I think Remotion Rally, Remotion, however you say it, I think it's, I think it's the better card. Well, I mean, Remotion Rally also is an all. It's not, it's not. The creature doesn't have to not be summoning six. So like, you can just use a creature that you played this turn to cast it instead of having to actually deliberately leave something back and potentially telegraph that. So, yeah, I think Remotion Rally is because it's free is just stronger. Yeah, uh, it turns out free spells still good, even all these years later. Um, what do we got next? De- Dev- Devonant? Trapper? Yeah, I mean, I know, how to say tra- I know how to say trapper. That's the other word I wasn't sure about. Um, I, I, th- th- I think you got it. I think you got it good enough. Do- Davenant? Yeah, it's a two and a white for a three two whenever you cast a historic spell. What, should it be a historic or should it be an historic? No, it's a historic. I don't. I don't know how this. I, I think. I think because you pronounce the H, it's an historic or a historic. Yeah, they, they, okay. bo- they both sound weird to me now. Yeah, tap tap target creature and opponent controls. So n- not not great, right? Casting artifacts to tap creatures. I just feel like there's better things you could be doing. Yeah, that said, like it's a pretty decent body for the mana cost as well. Like three two for three is not the absolute pits. But 
I can't imagine playing this over something like um, Gideon's Lawkeeper or Gold Meadow Harrier, the uh, the w one mana one one with white tap tap target creature. That just feels like you're you always have access to it at a lower cost, especially because most of the time, if you're casting an artifact, you're probably paying more than one. So, I I don't think this has a home. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> Next up, we have Dub, uh, which is Two and a white for an enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two as first strike and is a knight in addition to its other types. Is there anything that cares about knight tribal? Uh, maybe something in this set. I don't know. A cha changeling? No. I, I was joking. Um, yeah, I don't think this is very good. We already have ethereal armor as a card that gives, as an enchantment that gets first strike. That's just, I think, better than this card in almost every way. Like, it's cost less, it, it scales better. Yeah, it's just not deeply inspiring as a card. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, enchantments, it, auras are generally pretty mediocre unless they have some real upside. Like, remember, you're competing with stuff like Ethereal Armor, Ancestral Mask, Armadillo Cloak, and Rancor. Like, just plus two, plus two in first strike is not going to do it. Yeah. Um, what do we have next here? Up next, we got Excavation Elephant. A five mana, four and a white, three five, with kicker, one white. Uh, when Excavation Elephant enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. I haven't seen this card. I don't think it's very good because we have something like Sanctum Gargoyle, which just does this already for less mana. And is it, I guess it's a two three flyer. I think that's more relevant. I, I think I'd rather have the flyer than a bigger body, if we're being and, honest. And and he's also an artifact. I played him in some affinity builds. He's also an artifact. So like that helps too. Also, seven mana is a big ask. Like, yeah, it's a lot of manas. But like, this is out of the, this is too expensive for Tron to play it. Like, this is this is not good. Um, I'm gonna skip over one card here because I forgot to not include reprints in this list. Um, and I'm gonna move on to Healing Grace, which is technically a strictly better card than its predecessor um healing grace is one white for an instant prevent the next three damage that we dealt to any target this turn by a source of your choice you gain three life so this is both modes of healing solve is that yep <laughs> is that okay is that good no no it's not it really isn't uh t take us on to the next one Next up, we got Invoke the Divine, two and a white, destroy target artifact or enchantment. You gain four life. Is, isn't there a better version of this? Like, I want to uh, say that there's some other sideboard card, like, oh, a, a, a Divine Offering? Is that what it is? Yeah, I think it's the same thing. No, no, no. D divine Offering, destroy target. It's one and a white, destroy target artifact. You gain life equal to its converted mana cost. So, oh, so it costs less, but you might not get as much life. Or you might get a lot of life. It also doesn't hit enchantment. So there's that. But yeah. I don't know. This is a sideboard card that, you know, for life is not breaking the format on a sideboard card. Um, I think we can skip this next one. Um, we said we'd talk about all of them, Mike. We, okay, we said we'd talk about all of them. Mesa Unicorn, uh, one in white, two, two, lifelink. Next. <laughs> all right, fair enough. This next creature is kind of a next two. Two in a white for a one, three with flying. Whenever Pegasus Courser attacks, another target cre attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. Probably pretty good and limited. Not going to be very good in, in Popper. No. Um, also, I think there's the three mana two three blue version of this from hour of devastation that i think is just better yeah so not really knocking anyone's socks off here um All right, next, next up next up we've got sergeant at arms which is two and a white for a two three with kicker two and a white when it enters the battlefield if it was kick create two one one white soldier token so for six mana you get what four power five toughness um this I just realized some of these cards like sorry go ahead oh no 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 go 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 right ahead what, what were you gonna like, say I was gonna say picking this up with core skyfisher actually might not be that bad late game I mean I guess there are better cards that like sort of accomplish this like sins enlistment but I mean, so so this this doesn't require you to have lands it does require you to spend eight mana 
or which can be split over two turns, but like eight mana for four power. I, I guess actually, if if you've already cast it once, you've gotten two power out of it. That's going to stay behind. I guess eight mana for six power. It doesn't know. seem good. It, it's weird because you can't flicker this, and I would love to be able to flicker it. Yeah. So, I think this is a pass for me, just in terms of like, I don't think it does enough for the mana cost. Um, well, what do you th- what do you think of the next card, which is also sort of one we talked about a little bit, maybe going into a Boros build? Um, do you wanna do you wanna tell the people what this is? Oh, yeah, it's it's Sarah Disciple. Uh, it is one and a white. And it is a bird cleric with flying at first strike. Whenever you cast a historic spell, it gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. So I actually like this. And we, we talked a little bit back and forth. And I think I've come down on it since then. Um, having spent the entire week, like, we can, like, talk about Bobber fairly frequently. I still think that, like, if you can stick this on a board against Delver and they've got a bunch of fairies, it's just going to be hellish for them. Um, yeah, but I feel like Seeker of the Way is just better at this slot. You mean, you mean just in terms of like letting you stabilize and not care about their attackers? Y- yeah, yeah. Like what I would want in a, in a one and a white card in that deck. I guess that's fair. Um, I do like the built-in invasion for what it, evasion for what it's worth just because Seeker, they can technically start chumping it with all those one ones that they're, they've got. Right. Um, that said, like the the pump effect is lower impact and also harder to trigger. So, I guess I guess at the end of the day, like it's worse than Sarah Sarah or Sarah Disciple is a worse card in most situations than uh, Seeker of the Way. But I still think we could see this show up in some build of Boros. It would not surprise me, is what I'm getting at here. Okay, sure. Um, I'm going to skip over another reprint because there's actually a surprising amount of reprints and I'm going to go with Academy Drake, which is two and a blue for a two, two with kicker four. It has flying. And if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. So seven mana for a four, four flyer. Bad. Sure. I agree. Next. Academy Journey Mage, four and a blue for a three, two. It costs <laughs> one less if you control another wizard. When it enters the battlefield, you return target creature and opponent controls to his owner's hand. So, nope, not good. Mana, mana war with one more power and potentially only one more mana. Uh, yep. that, yeah, that's dicey. What's next? Arcane Flight, which has some of the funniest art in the entire set um, because it's a cat with wings and I just get a chuckle out of it. it. It's one blue mana for an enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. Um... I think there's better versions of this that exist. Maybe. Either way, like it's just not impactful enough in my mind. Yeah, I don't think so either. Spectral Flight might be the card you're thinking of. It's it's an additional one for an additional plus one plus one. But I think that it card is worth it. I don't know if this card is. And people don't run the other card. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're if you're comparing it to maybe being worse than another card people already aren't running, I would not be, you know, running online to grab my playset to this. So, um, this yeah. next card I, I I like. I just don't think it's very strong. It's okay. Artificer's Assistant, blue for a one one flying. That's a bird. Whenever you cast a historic spell, scry one, and like that's going to be fun and limited. And I, I don't know. I just feel like it's a cool effect, but it's just not strong. You know what I mean? So I guess like where could you see this fitting in? It like no it, if nowhere. If, okay, so so what sort of deck would have to exist for this effect to be strong? I guess is what Some, I'm getting at. I guess a, a a blue deck that also plays a lot of artifacts. So so not affinity is what you're telling me. You're, you're no, I sorry. Yeah, I don't think a scrying is. No, I don't think it's worth it in affinity, especially given that it's a blue mana and like that's a deck that's already kind of hamstringing itself on mana requirements anyway. So yeah, you want you want your one drops to be artifacts in that deck. All right. That's that. I think that's a fair analysis of this. I do like the art for it. It's kind of adorable. It's yeah. this little bird. Um, cool card. Next up, we have Befuddle, which I don't know if it's a reprint or if we've just seen versions of this card before, but it's two and a blue for an instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero oh until end of turn. Draw a card. I don't think it's very strong. 
I don't think so either. Um, I think we can move on to this next one, which is actually a functional reprint. Uh, blink of an eye, one in a blue. Uh, kicker, one in a blue. Return target non-land permit to its owner's hand. If this spell were kicked, draw a card. Uh, this is a functional reprint of Into the Royal. <laughs> yes, it is. And I think that the art is strictly superior. So if you're running Into the Royal, get this get this weird eye minotaur in there. I like it. I love it. it. All right, what's next? Uh, next is Cloud Reader Sphinx, which is four and a blue for a three, four Sphinx with flying. And whenever it enters the battlefield, scry two. So let's compare this to the obvious culprit. This versus Moldrifter. Moldrifter is, is better. Like, yeah, I, I, I think like this is getting in that same vicinity just in terms of like the better body and like a slightly worse effect. If this if this opted when it came in, if this was four blue, three four flying when ETB scry one draw card, would we be talking then? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think I think I think we could. I think so. I, I, I don't think it would be. I don't think it would be. Hmm. It wouldn't yeah, be three... replacing Moldrifter. It would probably be, you know, like, like Moldrifter, Moldrifter number five. Exactly. Like you, you might play it index it and maxed out on Moldrifters and wanted like one slightly bigger beater that's a little harder to deal with in terms of removal. That'd be pretty spicy. Or maybe maybe as the fourth Moldrifter. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could probably make the claim that that effect is good enough. Okay. Right. Yeah. What's it's not what it does though? It's not what it does, but it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's very close, and I could see them printing a card like that. Perhaps not at, at common, yeah. but like, I don't think that's a stretch. Up next, we have a, another functional reprint: <coughs> Cold Water Snapper, five and a blue for a four or five with hexproof. This creature is just Benthic Giant. It's just Benthic Giant. I do want to point out though, in this moment, um, one of the cool things about this set, since it is you know kind of a nostalgia fueled set. Um, this is the card that represents Cold Snap. And in case you haven't seen this yet, um, every set that takes place on the plane of Dominaria is referenced in either a card name or in the flavor text of a card in this set, including Alpha and Beta. Which I think huh. is real cool. Um, there's there's one of the golems that has like in its flavor text something about dig site beta 93, which I think is real neat. It's funny. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Nice little touch. Uh, next up, we have deep freeze. Deep freeze is two and a blue for an ench enchantment aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature has power and toughness. Z Base power and toughness is zero four has defender loses all of their abilities and is a blue wall in addition to its other colors and types. What on earth? What a is what this? a weird what a weird card, dude. This is gonna be I think this is gonna be good and limited, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna be good and popper. Here's the thing. Do you want this if you don't have flyers though? Because this seems really, really difficult for a deck to actually punch through. It's just kind of a weird card in that like you're giving your like you're nullifying a threat, but you're also giving your opponent like an O4 defender. Yeah, it's it's a weird card. <laughs> I'm I, I'm not a hundred percent a fan of this. Um, no. All right, g give give us something different. Uh, well, this next one's a reprint, so I'll skip it. Yeah. Up next, we have Homerate Explorer, three to blue for three three. When Homerate Explorer enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. It's a crab people. Huh. I don't know. It doesn't seem that good. In 2018, Wizards printed a creature with the type line Homerid. And those cards weren't very good either, Mike. The original Homerids weren't very they good. They weren't. I think this is actually probably markedly better than every Homerid printed it is. before it's it. The, this is the best Homerid. This is the best one. Um, I don't think it's that good. I, I do kind of wish that they tried to somehow fix the tide mechanic. For those unaware, the Homerids were like this weird like collection of creatures that all had like these weird tide counter abilities to represent like the ebbing and flowing tide where like if they had zero on them, it had one effect, a specific effect. And then like each upkeep, you put one on and then took them off when they reached a certain number. So it would be like, it would be like zero is something good, I think. And then one is neutral and two is 
something detrimental and then three is something neutral again and then it resets. I don't know. They were weird cards. Magic used to be bad. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to also skip Opt, which is a neat reprint and has sweet art. Um, but I'm going to talk about Relic Runner next. Um, it's one in a blue for a 2-1 human rogue, and it can't be blocked if you cast a historic spell this turn. Um, I cannot think of a situation where I would want this over elusive spell fist. Yeah, me either. All right. Um, next one. Up ne- up next, we have kind of an interesting take. Uh, rescue, blue, instant, return target permanent, you control to its owner's hand. So... Like a like a like always the defensive version of Vapor Snag or Unsummon, but it's also a permanent, so you could bounce like a a. I mean, I don't know what. Like, like you, could, you could bounce like a like a a prism or something. Oh, okay. So 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 the absolute best I can see for this card, like the absolute best play I can come up with, is saving your thing from removal or absolute best case scenario, getting to bust someone's capsize lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you? Yeah, that seems um, pretty sweet. <laughs> also, I didn't. I wasn't aware, and you know, I'm I'm glad we got to discuss this. This is a reprint, apparently. Rescue. Yeah. Huh. From Urza's Destiny. This would be an Urza's Destiny card. Whoops. Yeah. Whatever. Um. Next up. Uh. Briefly glossing over, Syncopate got a reprint. Sweet new art. Really just killing it aesthetically here. Um, but the next one, and this is one of the big ones, this is one of the ones we're going to go deep on. It's Unwind. It's two and a blue, instant counter target non creature spell. So it's a negate, but you untap three lands. All right. So let's have, let's have, you go first. So I'm going to play this in Tron. I'm going okay. to enjoy casting it in Tron. And I'm going to live the dream of untapping a blue land a pair of Tron pieces and like, I don't know, like doing a, like, like going like counter your spell teachings on end step. I think that's where this really fits. Like it's going to counter selling that's important to their game plan. That's not a creature. And then you're going to do something else on their end step. And I think if you can do that, you've, you've gotten your value out of it. Is that better than just casting condescend? Is that better than casting condescend? Um, I don't think you cut your condescends for this. I think that this could cut a... There are lists playing negate in the 75. I think that I'd prefer this over negate. It does require a slightly higher mana investment, but like the upside of being able to do something just absolutely goofy. Um, like There's even like the outside line of if your opponent's hellbent, you could do something really stupid where it's like cast something, unwind it, to like go up on mana so your rolling thunder is a bit bigger and and why is this better than rewind why is this better than rewind two blue is really difficult for tron to hit it's just like there are some games where it's just an impossibility in the early game this is almost always in most of the Tron builds going to be online i'd say consistently by turn four and most of the time by turn three all right Pretty, pretty spicy. You sold me. Yeah, I, I think this is going to see play. I don't think it's going to be like a four of in any list, but I do think that you will see this card. It, I, I have racked my brain. I have talked to a lot of people. I don't think there's a way to go infinite with this. So that's good. Mm, yeah, be, be, uh, the counter spells are much harder to do that with because you, you can't combo on your opponent's turn in this format. Yeah, and, and on top of that, like they need there needs to be spells to counter. Like They still need a target. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's just kind of weird and odd, and I kind of love it. Um, I'm do you, I'm happy. The, the only thing is, do you like it? Do you like it better than exclude? I guess excludes a creature. It's specifically a creature, but you also get to draw the cards. So no, they're not really that comparable. Yeah, it, it's definitely one of those weird things where like something comes out of Tron for this that's already a really good card, and this just has to prove itself to be better. But I think gotcha. I think there's room for that. I think that okay. this is one of the big movers and shakers. So what do you got next for us? Vidalian Arcanist. One in a blue. Gets you a 1-3 Merfolk Wizard. Tap to add colorless or yeah, colorless to your mana pool. Spin this mana only to cast instant or sorcery spell. I mean, this, this card can't be good, right? This isn't good. So I don't think that there's a deck that wants it. 
but I think it's an interesting effect and we rarely see ramp in blue. And even while this is restrictive, it does come with that like very nice blue stat line of two mana at one three. I, I want to like this more than I do. Um, and that's totally me on me, but like, I think that this is better than it looks. I just think that it's still not, you know, game breakingly it, good. It's not, it's not Augur of Bolas. No, it's not Augur of Bolas. It's not even, you know, I would honestly play this after like something like Omen Speaker, which is yeah. just worse than Augur of Bolas. Um, all right. Next up, we have Blessing of, and I need I need to read this one because I cannot pronounce this name, Belzenlock. There we go. I think, I think that's how I would have said it. Belzenlock. It, it, it's just the NL like throws me, and most of the times I've pronounced it, I've pronounced one or the other, but not both. But uh, this is one black for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. If it's legendary, it also gains life link until end of turn. I don't think this is good. No, dude, it's not good. Like, as we've covered, the legendary creatures available in Popper are not good, and there's no real way to make things into legendary creatures in Popper. So this is just a one-turn instant speed um, unholy strength. Up next, we have Cabal Paladin. Three and a black for a 4-2. Human Knight, whenever you cast a historic spell, Cabal Paladin deals, t- deals two damage Excuse me, to each opponent. It is not good. Hey, you know what deck can play this? No. It's Retraction Helix. Is that oh, deck cr- black? That, deck, that card's blue. Wait, hold on. No, it can't because it needs something that untaps so you can keep... I, I guess you could do like mirror and spy into this, but like, well, I think that the I think the red card that does this is better. The the one three fire weaver, the 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 one that already, although, yeah, that that's the one that whenever it like taps, it deals one damage. Yeah, that that's just the better creature, but that's the no, only it doesn't tap. It's whenever up. whenever an it's like whenever an artifact enters the battle under your control deals one damage to the opponent oh um reckless, reckless fire, fire weaver. weaver yeah there we go yeah um i don't see a use case for this um this is something that i would have perhaps considered back when like i was playing around with grixis metalcraft but that deck's days are gone long yeah. gone up next we have caligo skin witch Mm-hmm. One on a, one on a black uh, gets you a one three. Seems to be the going rate these days in defensive colors. Uh, kicker four three and a black, so a total of six mana. Yeah, six mana. Sorry. Uh, when Killigo Skin Witch enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, each opponent discards two cards. I don't think this is very good. So what? You're you're paying six mana for a Augur of Bolas body and a mind, mind rot. rot. Yeah, it doesn't seem great. <sighs> yeah. Not great, but I do really like the art on this one. This yeah, one's sweet. this one's good. All right, this next one, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to play a little bit of convincing here with me. Dark bargain, three and a black, instant. Look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. It then deals two damage to you. I don't understand the hype behind this. All right, maybe there's no hype. Maybe it's it's all overblown, but yeah, I think Forbidden Alchemy is just better. So I I had seen people talking about playing this in Forbidden Alchemy, and I'm just that's, baffled. Yeah, that's the only place I can think of it being good. And in that deck, I think you would rather have Forbidden Alchemy because you can flash it. You can do it twice, right? Like, it's awesome. Yeah, like, like it, it's mega impulse that also fills your bin. And I just, I can't see a use case for this. Like, even selling, like, like maybe Tordex would want this. But even there, like, you'd rather just, you know, have a dredger in the graveyard and be drawing cards that way most of the time. I don't know. This this seems amazing and limited. Don't get me wrong. There is also the fact that uh, a similar version of this effect exists in Bitter Revelation. That's the same mana cost. You look at four instead, but it is a sorcery. 
So I guess like is digging one card less for the same mana cost, but having it be something you can do on your opponent's end step good enough? Sorcery is hard. Sorce sorcery is hard. I don't know. Maybe if Teachings was still around in Force, I could see this maybe being like a one of in Teachings. Yeah. Because like just being able to go up by, by a card is what do you think of probably okay what do you think of it as a one of in like mono black as a one of in mono black i actually i feel like i f i feel like in that slot they would rather have the creature uh that gives them the monarch uh, thorn of the black rose because you get a creature out of the deal and i think and I'd, also, like, I'd also rather have read the bones before this in terms of like a filtering card draw spell yeah I don't know. I, I, I don't think this has a home, but I think like it's close enough to compulsive research in terms of like the effect that I would keep an eye on it. Um, next up, we have Deathbloom Thalid, which is two and a black for a creature fungus, which, by the way, Thalids are back. I'm very happy. Um, and so it's a three, two fungus. When it dies, put a gr create a green one, one sapperling creature token. Um. I don't think this is a great rate. No, I don't think so either. Like, I don't think Aristocrats wants this just because, like, the front side of it is better than the back side anyway, and it's three mana, which is kind of a lot for that deck. So I've got to imagine this is not playable. Br Brindle shoot this ain't. No, it certainly isn't. Uh, how about you? How about you take us on to less, less fungus based places up next we have demonic vigor uh b for an enchantment enchanted creature gets plus one plus one when it dies you return that card to its owner's hand zubera's question mark oh 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 okay um so i misread this the first time i thought this had the rancor text on it i oh. thought i thought this had the like a modified version of Rancor text on it, and I got real excited. I think going back to your hand is pretty bad for this effect, though. Like, it's a raised dead, not a back to the battlefield. A raised dead, not an unearth. Yeah, it's it's interesting, because plus one, plus one is not a huge boon, but the fact that, like, you will get that creature back and cast it again, I could maybe see this in mono black just as a way to, like... Like, your creatures are fairly, like black removal resistant I, like can you I imagine think dying evil is just better in that case i guess um i get uh, this does count towards your devotion as well for what it's worth sure <laughs> all right fair enough that makes sense no that makes sense all right next up we've already talked about this one but it bears repeating divest black sorcery target player reveals their hand you choose an artifact or creature from it they discard it. Uh, I think might be okay. I, how, how big is affinity in your metagame and how mono black are you? Yeah. Uh, I, th I think it's going to be the question that gets asked uh, for, of this card. Um, uh, because you, because if, you're, you, if you're like black red, I think Gorilla Shaman is just better. But that's fair. It, it, it can take like almost anything in the affinity deck. So it's, since it's strong against that deck, I'd be interested to see in how it does. Um, now, how do you think this fares against Boros Monarch? Hmm. Probably okay. Like maybe not as 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 good as Affinity, but if you could snag like a key prophetic prism or core sky fisher, it, it might be it might it might work out pretty good. Um but I think I would almost rather have duress so that I, I could take um maybe like a key burn spell. Or a you know, again a prophetic prism or one of the token producing cards. Although those are pretty resistant to discard. That said, we did finally get a way for mono black to deal with artifacts, which is very neat. Yes, um, that they do not traditionally. Also, the art on this is absolutely gorgeous. I really love the uh, the little sprite pulling a memory out of someone. I don't yeah, know. it's cute. I think it's cool. I, I, I like it. All right, what do we got next? We have Drudge Sentinel, <laughs> a 2-1, three, 3 mana, 2 and a black, 3 tap d Drudge Sentinel, it gains indestructible until end of turn. This is, this is bad. I don't even think this is good and limited. Like, I, I guess it blocks for days, but like... It's a creature that wants to attack but has to block. Yeah. Actually, I mean, 
the the tapping isn't part of the cost. Like you can just kind of get in with this thing and like pay the mana if you need to keep it alive. I don't know. It's not good, but it's not as bad as I thought at first glance. That 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 why is this templated like this? Yeah, it's not the tap symbol. What does this mean? Oh my god, this is indestructible. Or not indestructible, it's regenerate. This is a different templating that effectively is regenerate. No. You're Yeah, actually you're right because regenerate as part of it you tap the creature. Yeah. It's and but remove it, but, it from but like, combat, but but this but this doesn't yeah, this doesn't look like tapping as part of the ability. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a new templating that functionally is similar to regenerate, but a lot better because <laughs> it doesn't die for the whole turn. I don't know. This is weird. I don't well, let's move on. Drud, Drudge Sentinel, yeah. not good. Don't play it. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Eviscerate, which is three and a black for a sorcery, destroy target creature. No. Yeah, next. What do we got? Feral Abomination, a five and a black for a five, five with death touch. Next. Big creatures with death touch are not good. You're not, you're not usually getting someone with them. All right, Fungal Infection. And this is the one where I'm going to have a very, very bad take. Um, so it's one black, instant. Target creatures minus one, minus one until end of turn. Create a one, one green sapperling. So uh, you know where I want to play this? It's pretty flavorful. Where do you want to play it? Blue black teaching so I can splash uh, Sprout Swarm for free. Oh my god, Mike, <laughs> no. I'm... I am 100% kidding. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. If someone wants to go out there and, you know, do it because, ha ha, funny meme deck, go for it. But, like, I don't think this is... I guess it's an instant, so, like, you can play it during attackers and kill a 2-2. Like, this is kind of a disfigure. It's so much worse. It is worse, but... Disfigure I, kill... This, this can't kill Delver. A flip Delver. It can't kill a flip Delver. That is true. Um... It can't even kill an unflipped Del. I guess. I guess like the best case against Delver, you kill a spell stutter sprite and block their Delver. Sure, it hasn't flipped yet. I don't know. It's what? What's next? What's next? Um, rat colony, one in a black, two one rat. Rat colony gets plus one plus zero oh for each other rat you control. A deck can have any number of cards named Rat Colony. Does does this make Relentless Rats good? Why wouldn't you just play more Relentless Rats? Because they cost three mana, and this card costs two mana. Oh my god, you've done it! And, you've, bro- you've broken the meta wide open, my friend. Well, but and and this one caught, co- yeah, this one you curve, dude. <laughs> and then you play Typhoid Rat. No, I don't know. Rat Tribal, you heard it here first. Adrian has broken the format. I don't think but this it, card is good. Rat Colony would be bad by itself, yeah, because it just gets plus one plus zero. Oh. Like that's you just get blown out by like trickery. I was gonna say you don't want to you don't want to be sinking this much time and and deck space into something that gets blown out by one of the most common red sideboard cards in the entire format. All right, next we got Soul Salvage, two and a black. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Not really a fan. Uh, we have Dread Wanderings, which is this. At instant speed with cycling. This isn't good. Next. Uh, Stronghold Confessor. Black for a 1-1 one, one with Menace. Already, I don't hate this. Kicker, three generic mana. If it was kicked, it comes in with two plus one plus one counters on it. So for four, you can get a 3-3 three, three with Menace. Or you can just have a 1-1 one, one with Menace. Do, do you like this in like the mono black beatdown deck? I kind of do. Like... The like the the just like rituals and one drops like it's not a it's not a two power creature but it does get in there. I don't also, know. Also, dude, this art is lit. I like the uh, I like a lot of the cabal art. It's very um it's very evocative of like the scourge and Odyssey era cabal. I don't know. I I do really dig it. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Uh, what, what what do we got next? Valid omnivore. 
Uh, three and a black gets you a three three with a one. Sacrifice another creature. Thalid Omnivore gets plus two plus two until end of turn. If a Sapperling was sacrificed this way, you gain two life. I do not think this is good. No, um, Sapperling Tribal is not a thing. It won't be. I'm sure this will see play in your Thelon of Havenwood EDH deck, and that's about it. Next card. Um, Vicious Offering. One and a black. Kicker, Sacrifice, Creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. If it was kicked, that creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. So best case scenario, you have something that you want to die anyway, and you get to kill something like an angler. Uh, people are playing that Vicious Hunger card. I don't think that's what it's called. Vicious Hunger might be something else. But people play like... Um, Bone Splitters? No, no, it's the card It's the card where it's one of the black and the creature gets minus two, minus two, and only turn and you gain two life. Moment of Craving. Moment of Craving, yeah. So I think it's pretty comparable to that card, except the downside is that if you didn't sacrifice the creature, you just don't gain the life. But yeah, like in this but case, it, you get to kill something bigger. I don't know. That's what that's what I'm thinking of when I see this card. I, I was going to say, like, the, the upside of can kill one of the biggest creatures in the format pretty consistently, kill most anything out of affinity, barring Atog. That that's pretty decent upside at least to yeah. me anyway More i don't i don't hate two it life um next up what do we got wind grace acolyte which is a four and a black for a three two when it with flying when is the battlefield you put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard and you gain three life uh i don't think this is good yeah we're past the days where five mana three power flyers are an appealing thing, thing anymore um next we're moving into red with a uh, bloodstone goblin one in red for a two two whenever you cast a spell if that spell was kicked bloodstone goblin gets plus one plus one and gains menace until end of turn um what red kicker spells do we want to play i i just don't think there's gonna be really that <sighs> I don't think a lot of spells with kicker get played in the format. I mean, there's the blue one, which is pretty good. Like uh, the counter spell. Like burst lightning? I yeah, I just I just don't think that the kicker tribal deck is a good is a thing. No. I I, I don't think so either. Next. Uh fervent strike, target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains first strike and haste till end of turn. Mono red heroic? Yeah, it's a one mana haste enabler. Like I don't fully hate it, but like it's in that awkward like position of it grants first strike and it's an instant so you kind of want to play it to blow your opponent out mid combat but it also grants haste so you're kind of obliged to use it on a creature that came in this turn and then they know that it's got first strike I don't know it's all of those parts are good but together they're a little bit weird to me does that make sense yeah like it, all these parts are good but together you know I, I i i like i like chicken i enjoy ice cream i'm not going out of my way to put some chicken tenders in an ice cream cone that's your mistake dude <laughs> um oh, all next. right we have- next on the list fiery intervention four and a red sorcery choose one it deals five damage to a creature or destroy target artifact God, I wish this was even a mana cheaper. Then I might be able to talk about it. Yeah, wow, this is a really cool art on here too. I I do I do dig the uh, Chandra winding up a fireball with these two battling colossi in the background. I don't know these two these two rock'em sock'em <laughs> robots. Oh, dude, and you either she either deals five damage to the tree or she destroys the robot. Wow, this card is this card is flavorful. I like it. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice little touch. Um, I don't think anyone's playing this, are they? No. It's a cool, it's a cool looking card, though. All right, what do we have next? Because this also has cool art. This is Frenzied Rage. Uh, I think we've seen a bunch of these recently in the standard sets. Uh, it's one in a red for an enchantment. Uh, you enchant the creature. It gets plus two, plus one. It has menace. Uh, not always a common, <coughs> but this is like basically C red. Um, I don't think C red was a common, though. Yeah, this I, think is... Madcap, I think Madcap Skills is the best version of this card. Yeah, just shifting it up to just plus three plus a ON Menace is so much more aggressive. I just, yeah. 
I don't think I don't think you want this over Madcap or skills pretty much ever. So that's not seeing play. This probably won't either. Um, next up, we've got Gitu Chronicler, which is four and a red for a human wizard, a one three, or, or excuse me, one and a red for a one three, and then it has kicker of three and a red. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's six mana. Um, Archaeomancer. I'm not thrilled. Not thrilled with it either. Uh, in red, the comparable card is Anarchist, which only returns sorceries, but does cost less. Um, I mean, it's one but, mana less. Like, it's not even like that big of a discount, and it's markedly worse. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, 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 I don't think this is going to see play because there just exists a better version, and you'd rather be in blue in this format anyway if we're being completely honest. <laughs> Mike, please. Up next, we have Gitu Journey Mage, two in a red. When Gitu Journey Mage enters the battlefield, if you control another wizard, Gitu Journey Mage deals two damage to each opponent. Uh, Gitu Journey Mage is a wizard, and it is a 3-2. I don't think this card is good. But Adrian, what? you can play Lava Mancer's skill with this card. Is that the one that gives the wizard the tap two, deal two? I, I, th I think it's just like tap, deal two to creature or player, but... No, this isn't good. Like, Wizard Tribal's not a thing in our format. And I don't think it will be unless there's a lot of things printed for it. So. I, I, have, I did try and brew a Wizard deck once, and it was not very good. Yeah, like, I think, I, I think the peak of that is Lava Mancer's skill, and it's deeply forgettable. Um, yeah. Up next... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Take this one. You, you were pretty excited about this and i do want to have a discussion about it I, I think i think it's okay we have gitu lava runner uh r for a one two again a human wizard as long as there are two or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard gitu lava runner gets plus one plus so and has haste so not really a great turn one card no this is this is not goblin guide and i've seen people referring to it as a popper goblin guide it is not that yeah, it's a popper goblin guide if you're a red blue deck or maybe you're mono red and then you play G2 Lava Runner on turn one. And then I guess if you have like a taxing, if you have Phyrexian spells, then maybe it's pretty good. What do you think about that? But oh, that seems like that seems so uh, all in. You know what I just thought about? This into double mutagenic on turn one. That just doesn't seem very good in the long game, though. No, it doesn't. Um, I guess where were you thinking this could see play? Because I had a lengthy discussion about this in red deck wins which i think is wrong yeah it's not a 2-2 two -two. it won't have haste on the first turn actually yeah now i'm kind of down from this card yeah i don't know just, like it it, 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 it it would be strong well no because you have to kind of in a blue red deck why are you playing this as your threat it's just in this weird position where like a 2-2 two -two with haste for one is an absurd rate and really really powerful but I think the ask on this is just a little too high. If it was one instant or sorcery, I think this could be viable. But it's just it's just slightly too high because like you're not playing this in burn, right? Yeah, because then it's like, well, turn one you go G2 Lava Runner, and then pass turn, and then turn two you go like double instant or sorcery, and then uh, it's a plus two plus two with haste. But like the turn that the haste mattered is gone. Well, I, th I think like if you had this in burn, your your line would be bolt, turn two, play your second land, bolt this thing, get in for two. You've dealt eight to your opponent. No, I just don't think that's good. I don't either. It's just not dreadfully inspiring. Uh, next, we have Keldon Overseer, which is two in a red for a three one. It has haste and it has kicker three in a red. And when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap it, and it gains haste. So this is Act of Treason with a 3-1 haste body stapled to it for a total of 7 mana. I don't think that's very good. I thought I liked this card, and then I thought about it longer, and I think it's bad. It's just not good. <laughs> Up next, we have Keldon Raider, 2 red red. When Keldon Raider enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. And I was thinking, wow, already Balduvian Horde getting wrecked. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly smaller than the Horde, but, like, it does mean you're card neutral. 
and also it's a May. But yeah, no no one's playing Balduvian Horde, and that's already legal and much more aggressive. So I don't know. I don't think it's Obviously. good. Me either. Next. Next, we have Keldon Warcaller, which is one in red for a 2 2. Whenever Keldon Warrior attacks, put a lore counter on target saga you control. There what are do those no words common. actually mean? There are no common sagas. They mean nothing. It means it's a two mana 2 2. All right. It's nice that we get bears in red now. They're still not good enough. Yeah. Next. Radiating lightning. Three in a red. Instant. Radiating lightning does three damage target player and one damage to each creature that player controls. Isn't there a version of this with Chandra on it? Chandra's Outrage, maybe? Yeah, and I think it's like one more mana and it hits them for one more, but it still does the ping everything. I don't know, like... Two mana more to bolt your opponent when you cast Electricery is a marked downside, in my opinion. It's nice. Char- it's still an instant, but like. Chandra's Outrage deals four damage to a creature and two damage to the creature's controller. So I'm thinking it's another card then. There's some card that I'm pretty sure exists that's like five mana, four to a player, one to each thing they control. And I want to say it has a picture of Chandra on it, but like I could be making this up. I'm I'm sure it could be a thing. All right, next. Let's just keep moving. Yeah. R- Rummaging Cyclops, three and a red for four, four. R- Rampaging Cyclops games minus two, minus O, as long as two or more creatures are blocking it. So this is a four, 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 four that if your opponent double blocks is probably maybe trading for one of those things. Not good. All right, what's next? Run amok. One on a red, instant. Target attacking creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Okay. Um, so, first off, team or battle rage, this is not, right? Right. That said, I don't hate slapping this on a killed fiend, but, like, again, just, like, the better card already exists. Yeah. All right. What's next? What's next? Seismic shift. Three and a red. Destroy target land. Up to two target creatures can't block this turn. So uh, for your aggressive land destruction deck? Question mark? Yeah, get in there. Next. I'll, I'll be curious to see what Nick Marino makes with this card. Marine Bro oh, makes with this card. I'm, sh- I'm sure he'll find a way to play it. But yeah. until What's then. She even, fu- she even fire. Uh, R, kicker four. She even fire deals two damage to target creature. If the spell was kicked, it deals four damage to that creature instead. It's not good. So so this is a strictly Wait. worse version of a card, though. This Which is card? This is burst lightning, but it can't hit players. And oh. I actually think burst lightning is a fine card in Popper. It's not great right now, but I think it's a fine card. So, I don't know. Sheevan Fire, I don't think is totally unplayable, but, like, it's pretty close. I haven't seen Burst Lightning in years at this point, so I can't imagine that Burst Lightning with more restrictions or Burst Lightning number five, even, would see play. So, I don't know. Not amazing. Um, Next up, we have Skirt... Oh, actually, Skirt Prospector got reprinted, but that's already common. Uh, next up, we have Keldon's or Warlord's Fury. One, a, a red mana for a sorcery. Creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. Draw a card. What, do we like this in Kiln Fiend decks? I mean, it's in that weird position of like, this feels best when your opponent has a bunch of blockers. And at least it cycles. Like, is there ever a position where you might want this in like, Boros because you're attacking with a bunch of stuff that might not be huge enough? No, I don't think it's very good in Boros. All right. I think that's fair. Um, how about you how about you take us away with the first green card and also first green card of note? Adventurous impulse. Look at the top three G. Sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put that into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Green ponder? I mean, it's not so. So, so you say that it's not quite ponder, but like, how far away is this from ponder? I, I mean, it's not. It's far. Like, let's be honest. Um, 
you don't really you don't get like if you see three good cards you don't get to keep them um but it does it, it is just like kind of a cantrip which is pretty nice into stuff like green wants yeah like it's it's one it's one of those cards where like i think this is good it's a little bit more versatile in what it gets but digs less deeply than commune with nature or ancient stirrings um but like a bad ponder in green is still you know that's interesting yeah right that said it does put the creature it does put the unused the unchosen cards to the bottom which i think is worse so i don't know it's it certainly is a step closer to card advantage no longer being strictly blues wheelhouse and i do appreciate that um so yeah, i think sure. this will see play um next up we have ancient animus which is one in a green instant put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature you control if it's legendary again rather unlikely then it fights a creature target creature and opponent controls so this is actually just again a pit fight that can't be countered by pyroblast um or hydroblast excuse me do you yeah, like yeah. this i i do not like it no all right, fair enough. Uh, how about you take away take us away with this next one? Up next, we have Arbor Armament uh, G for put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains reach until end of turn. Uh, I, mean, I feel like there are a lot of better cards against Delver and Green already, and people don't play them. So, so most of those cards do deal better with like removing multiple threats from their side of the board. This does improve your own threats. That's true because it gets the counter. Like, it, it's pseudo two-for-one territory where it's like, oh, like, I can make my thing just big enough to, like, survive trading with the, this Delver and then bash in next turn. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. But, like, it's also definitely a sideboard card and kind of niche. Yeah. And uh, what do we have next here? We've got a Baloth Gorger. It's two green-green for a 4-4 beast with kicker four generic. And if it was kicked, it comes in with three plus one plus one counters on it. So it's an eight mana seven seven. Next. Yep. Broken bond. One to green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is sorcery. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Hey, don't hate that. Mono um, green Tron. So I like this in Tron list as like a way to deal with enchantments and artifacts and also potentially just be one of the dumbest things you can do. Like if your opponent's on something like I don't know that happens to have relevant artifacts going nuclear thing hit Tron on like turn three is real nice. Um, I, I definitely like this. I feel like it has a potential place in a lot of Tron variants, but I think mono green Tron since it's really hell bent on getting Tron out there quickly is probably one of the better locations for this. Um, my question is, is do you still play this if you're a deck with explore because i've seen mono green tron run explore in the past hmm. i don't know yeah don't, this also has to have a target which is kind of unfortunate it does um which is definitely why it's a sideboard card and the other thing is like it's a little weird like this comes in against boggles and I, I guess it does get you to, like, big mana stuff, so you can hopefully, like, at least compete with them or potentially go over them. So, I don't know. I think it's an interesting card, and the fact that the land comes in untapped is nice, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if something plays this. Uh, next up, we have Corrosive Ooze. One in a green, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Corrosive Ooze blocks or becomes blocked by an equipped creature, destroy all equipment attached to that creature at the end of combat. How many creatures routinely get equipped? What equipments do you see? A lot of, Adrian. I guess Flare Husk and Bone Splitter. It's not great. Fruity and Longbow sometimes, but those creatures don't attack. Yeah. I don't know. This is bad. It's bad. It's bad. What's next? Gaia's Protector. Three and a green for a 4-2. Gaia's Protector must be blocked if able. I don't think it's good. Nope. Uh, for what it's worth, I don't think this next one's that great either. 
gift of growth one in a green instant kicker of two generic untapped target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn if this spell was kicked it gets plus four plus four until end of turn instead Meh. yeah it's just not dreadfully inspiring um i do like the art on it though the 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 big big deer very big deer up next, we have Grow from the Ashes, two and a green for a sorcery, kicker two. Search your battlefield for a basic, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shelf your library. If the spell was kicked, instead search your library for two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, and then shelf your library. I, I just don't think this is very good. So this is a rampant growth that puts it in untapped. Um, the closest competition, I would say, is Far Wanderings, which is three and a green search of a basic land comes in tapped and if you have threshold you get three instead um i will say this card is definitely hitting the nostalgia well, buttons um just because i don't know if you noticed in the art do you do you know what that thing is i have to go back to it uh no that is phyrexian colossus that was a standard card it was a Eight mana, eight eight that didn't untap during your untap step, and you could pay eight life to untap it. Gotcha. Back in the day, cards um, were bad. What do you think about this versus a card like Sky Shroud Claim? Although I guess Sky Shroud Claim, yeah, uh, it's three to green for a sorcery searcher library for the two forest cards, so specifically forests, and put them onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Ooh, now that you bring that up, like this does technically get other colors, but five mana ramp spells are a little dodgy. I don't know. Like, maybe there's some deck that wants to be able to ramp into, like, Crusher that isn't Tron, but outside of that, I I have a hard time figuring where you play this in some kind of mono green ramp shell. Yeah. But, all right, next up, Croson Druid. Two and a green, it's a two, three, and then it has a kicker. Kicker's four and a green, and if it was kicked when it enters the battlefield, you gain ten life. So eight mana, gain ten life, get a two three. I don't. Uh, I don't. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't think it's that good. Look, if you want to gain ten life, play feed the clan. That's all I'm gonna say on this. What's next? Really do have repaint Land of War Elves, but also Land of War Envoy two to green, Elf Scout. It's a three two for one of the green. You add one mana of any color. I don't like that? this. What does that mean? Add one mana of any color to my mana pool? Yeah. Did Why you did not? Did you not hear? They're doing away with the mana pool in text. What? This this sentence feels very incomplete. Did you not notice that the land URLs right next to it just says "add green"? Hmm. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little bit more awkward when you see it written out, but. That is the new templating. They no longer reference the mana pool because new players found it confusing. Um, that said, I don't think this is good. Is that no, fair? It's not. No, it's not. Yeah, wow. I didn't know that. All right, next up, we continue the parade of two mana th- one threes with Lanowar Scout. So it's one and a green for a one three elf scout, and uh, it has tap. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. This is already a card. Um... For a green for the one one uh Sakura Tribe Scout. And people play that card. Yeah, so this is one mana more. So it's coming out a little bit later, but it's also a one three, which means you can kind of block until you get to whatever weird rampy land destruction thing you're planning on doing. Um I don't know. This is niche. It's real niche. Yeah, it seems real niche. I, I'm inclined to say this isn't good, but I would not also I would also not be surprised if it saw play somewhere. Um like maybe Mono Green Tron wants this because it can power out like more Tron pieces, I guess. I don't know. That that's a reach. Speaking of reach, up next we have Mammoth Spider, a f- three five, four to green for a spider with reach. That is a 3-5. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. So, that was a funny joke. Let's move on. I really hate the art on this. I'm like a Me pretty too. bad arachnophobe. I don't like this. I'm Let's not going to like this when I draft this set and I have to look at it. Um, next up, we have Pierce the Sky. One in a green. Instant. Pierce the Sky deals seven damage to target creature with flying. 
I don't hate it. It sends a message to the Delver decks. I mean, it sends the message don't mess of, with me. Your thing is very dead. Very dead. So dead. Um... Up next, we have Sapperling Migration. One and a green, kicker four. Create two, one, one green Sapperling creature tokens. If the spell was kicked, create four of those tokens instead. Um, again, just don't think that the mana investment is worth what you're getting. Uh, I think there are better mana or better token producers in green, like Scatter the Seeds or you know Sapperling Swarm, like we've discussed before, for like the control deck. So yeah, I, I, what do you think? I don't think it's very good. Yeah, I, th- I think the mana to power and toughness ratio is just a little off for this to be playable. So, yeah, it's a no for me, dog. Um, next, Yavamaya Sap Herd. It's a two to green for a two two creature. It's a fungus, and uh, when it enters the battlefield, it creates a one one green sapling creature token. Uh, brings so a buddy. It brings a buddy, and it's a three three for three, basically spread across two bodies. It's not good. Don't no. play it. Um, oh, this next one's actually a reprint, but uh, why, why don't you tell us about Blood Tallow Candle? Blood Tallow Candle is a one-drop artifact for low trinket mage. Si- oh, wait. Six tap. Sacrifice Blood Tallow Candle. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. So? I don't like it. That I mean, mm. Tr- play it in Tron Trinket Mage. I, I don't know, dude. I don't think it's very good. I was going to say, it is the magic Tron number, but like... It also doesn't kill some of the threats on the format. And what was it? Uh, my my bad call of uh, that that's that uh, universal solvent. That yeah, wasn't yeah. good. And this is worse. Um, next up, Guardians of Coilos, five generic mana for a four four artifact creature construct. When it enters the battlefield, you may return another target historic permanent you control to its owner's hand. So uh, this bounces prisms, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's very good. It's also a five mana four four. Yeah. No, don't next, do this. We have Jousting Lance, a piece of equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus O. Oh. As long as it's your turn, equipped creature has first strike and has equipped cost three. I don't think it's very strong. No, it's restrictive and it doesn't let you be defensive. It just kind of makes the creature a little bit more of a pain to block. Um, but if you're getting chumped, you're getting chumped anyway. I don't know. It, it's not very good. Next, and I think that this is the card that I've seen the most people misread and misevaluate as a result of it, Navigator's Compass. One generic mana, artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Tap until end of turn, target land you control becomes the basic land type of your choice in addition to its other types. This is not good in Tron. Can you, can you tell me why this isn't good in Tron, Adrian? I, I don't know, because you can't tap the Tron land for more mana now. Yup, it sure, it's exactly that. Um, if this was, and I'm going to be completely honest, if this was just a prophetic prism that gained three life instead of drawing a card, I would maybe consider it. I don't think this card is good. Because the only deck I can think of that really wants this effect is Tron, and this doesn't help with their game plan because it's not actually really filtering mana. Um, this right. is the same issue I ran into when I was like, I wonder if there's a way to make Tron work with like drain life effects. And the answer is no, because like the only way you can do that is elsewhere flask. And then you're down a bunch of mana. But um, why don't you take this next one? Partic Wonder, six mana, five, five with trample. Is this? No, this isn't good. No, no never it's mind. not. It's, it's bad. Not. Um, next, Power Stone Shard. Um, three mana, artifact, tap, add colorless for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. We talked about this. I don't think it's good. I still don't think it's good. I think it's going to be hard to use this as a ramp spell. I think it's going to be harder than it looks. So yeah, I'm not, I don't think it's that good. That said, someone, this, this is my pick for, someone will 5-0 with this, and it doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. Um, next we have, sh- sorry, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, short Sword. One mana, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, equip one. So I like it. It's cute. This is the third co- functional reprint of this. We have Leonin Scimitar and Hound Kopesh, which are both this oh. exact same card. On the worst. So next up we have Skittering Surveyor, which is three generic mana for a one-two artifact creature construct. 
And when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. Um, is this just worse than, uh, what is it, Wandering Eye or whatever? Uh, uh, the, the, the Pilgrim's kite. Eye? Pilgrim's Eye, thank you. I think, I think, I think so. Okay, that's fair. Um, next. Sparring Construct, which when it dies, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. When it dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter target creature you control. It's essentially a reprint of Arcbound Worker, which already doesn't see play. Huh. I... Oh, yeah, because that has modular. Yeah, oh. but it's a 0-0, zero, zero, so, I mean, you know, split, splitting hairs, but... To be fair, modular can't go on any creature. It's only artifact creatures, but... That's true. Like... So this one's a little better. Minor details here. Um, let's round things out. The last common of the set. Voltaic Servant. Two generic mana for a 1-3. God, we have seen a lot of these. This is just like the default body for two mana at this point, isn't it? Um, it is... A 1-3 artifact creature construct again, and at the beginning of your end step, untap target artifact. Um, is there a use for this? V vintage. <laughs> well, so I, I do really love the art. I don't know if you've looked closely at this art at all. No, I mean, I'm looking at it now. The, uh, the, the construct pictured has a voltaic key as a hand. Oh, that's cool. And also in I the background it. in the left, it's a Thran Dynamo. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, like th there's a lot of cool art things. Okay. We've made it through this whole set review. Real long set review here. Um, let's recap. So I love this set. I love the design. How big of an impact do you think this is going to have on Popper? I don't think it's going to have a high impact. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be game changing. That said, I think this is one of the better standard releases we've gotten in a couple of years. Yeah. Like, like I said at the beginning, this is one where there were a lot of cards that we could pretend would be close to playable and that folks might actually toy around with. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the big takeaways from this set for me are unwind. I think is really good. Divest. I think is pretty good. Um, just going through here. If someone can figure out how to make Gitu Lava Runners like consistently a two mana, uh, one mana, two, two with haste, then like I think that's good. Um, Adventurous Impulse, I think, is pretty quality just in terms of being a green quote unquote ponder. And I think Broken Bond is a pretty solid card. Outside of that, I think that there's not much that's going to actually see play. But there's a lot of things where it's like, uh, if you tweaked a couple of these values, I could maybe see this. So I think that's good. Like maybe standard sets are going to be able to contribute to the format again. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I guess, I guess do you have any other closing thoughts on this set? Uh, no, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens, though. Yeah, I, I will say I'm stoked. For this limited environment this seems like a very fun set to draft um i know yeah, that's not not the topic of our show but i have not drafted in about six months because i found ixalan so boring so i'm glad that i'm gonna have a set that i might want to you know on friday nights go hit up a draft um that'll be neat um all right do you want to take us out on this uh wonderful wonderful set review that we've thrown together at the last minute Sure. Thanks for joining us today. This podcast is brought to you by the support of, of our patrons and especially our patron. Mike, why don't you say it? Uh, you're, the one who, you're the one you're the one with the story. I I I I I guess that's fair. Um this week the patron of the week is going to be 5311. Um uh oh god, I really should have asked this. I met this wonderful person while I was at GP Hartford. Um came up to me very last minute we were kind of already getting out of there but wanted to say hi i really appreciate meeting you i'm sorry i couldn't stay in chat longer if i ever see you again at a gp i will promise to make more time so that i can you know actually say hi to you because you did go out of your way to find me um thank you for being a patron i appreciate it all right continue with the outro all right we'd like to remind you of listening to this on a platform with reviews uh, they're always appreciated because they boost our visibility. If you've got a deck list or idea for a topic, feel free to contact us either via our website or by emailing us directly at colorcommentary at gmail.com. Special thanks to 
uh, my LGS Pat's Games and Mike's LGS JP Comics, and of course the ever musically talented L. You can find our theme song Quantitative and other great tracks over on his SoundCloud uh, .net forward slash e l l e l l e l l. Till next week, this is Adrian and Mike, and we are signing off for color commentary. Thank you.